Hey there, Saki here from Saki Tech, and in today's video, I will share top five tips and tricks to properly secure your Samsung Galaxy S8 or S8 Plus. All these tips pertain to security and designed to protect your privacy from prying eyes. So let's dive in and discover. By the way, if you're looking for a gorgeous case for your Galaxy S8 or S8 Plus, check this one out. I dropped the links down below in the description. All right, so the first thing I want to talk about is called a secure startup. So basically, this is a security feature that enables you to enter a PIN number before even your Android system starts up. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So if you go into the settings, and if you scroll down to lock screen and security, and if you scroll down just a little bit, you are going to see the secure startup. Just go inside, and you can read the description. So basically what happens is when you shut off your phone, your phone is going to get encrypted and when you turn the phone back on, unless you put in your regular PIN number, the phone is going to remain encrypted. The way this is relevant is because there are actually ways to hack your phone when you're in the regular lock screen with a PIN number. It is in fact easily hackable if the phone is not encrypted. But if the phone is actually encrypted and there's still a PIN code requirement, then it's very hard to actually hack the device. Actually, let me go ahead and demonstrate so you guys get an idea of what I'm talking about. So let's uh, press and hold the power button. And then let's just do a restart. Okay. Now, once the phone restarts, you're going to see the actual logo of your carrier. And you're going to see the logo of Samsung. But right after that, you're not going to see your regular lock screen. You're just going to see a, a box that's going to ask you to enter your PIN number. All right. So as you can see, it says... Your phone is encrypted for security. To actually start up your device, enter your PIN. And then you tap that and you just put in your regular PIN number. Let me put in mine right now. And then click done. And that's actually going to verify you. It's going to unencrypt the phone and then it's going to log you in. It's just going to take a couple extra seconds because unencrypting the phone actually takes some extra time. But once the procedure is complete, the phone goes straight into your home screen, bypassing the lock screen security because you already put in the PIN number. It's going to be the same PIN number you use for the lock screen or you can use it for the secure startup. All right, so let's move on to the next security tip. All right, so the next tip has to do with the lock screen. So basically, I just sent myself a text message and when I pull down the notifications panel when the phone is in unlocked state, it's only natural that I can see uh, who sent me the message and what the content of the message is. It says this might be a private message. That's what I sent myself. But uh, what if uh, the phone is actually locked and you're not around and a friend comes over and they, you know, just power the device on, try to maybe unlock it or whatever, but at least they can see that you just received a message from somebody and they can see the exact content, the time and everything of that message. Now you want to make sure that you prevent that because you don't want anybody having any kind of access to your information when your phone is locked. So what you want to do is you want to go to the settings and then uh, scroll down to lock screen and security and then scroll down again to notifications and then tap this and simply allow this option hide content and also notification icons only would be ideal as well. So when you do the, either one of these uh, what happens is when you're in the lock screen you cannot see the content of anything you'll just see the notification icon. So right now I can see everything as usual, no problem. But if I go here, I'm not going to be able to see what's going on. All it says is uh, there's an icon right there I can tap on it and it's going to say that there was a message. So there might be an inkling of a message here, but it doesn't say who it came from, nor does it give me the content of that message. So if this is something you are actually concerned about, make sure that option is in fact enabled. As you can see, every other thing over here is hidden. It says contents hidden. Fantastic. All right, so let's move on to the next tip. Let's go into the settings, go to lock screen and security, and then go to secure lock settings. Tap on it and make sure both of these top settings are enabled to immediately. So it says lock automatically. Basically, this is saying locks the screen when screen automatically turns off. So if my phone is just sitting there and when the display times out, is going to turn off. But by default, this setting is set to one of these guys. 
Okay, so it's going to be actually 30 seconds even after the display shuts off for the phone to lock itself, which is not a good thing because your phone is actually uh, available for access for those 30 seconds even when it is off. So make sure this one is set to immediately and this one as well. Lock instantly with power key. Okay, now if this is not enabled and this is at 30 seconds, let me show you what happens. So let me uh, turn off the screen. And right now, I'm assuming my uh, phone is actually locked, but it's not. If I power the device on, it's going to go right back into the phone. So I can walk away and some, somebody can just go right in. So, but if I do this uh, setting, lock screen and security, secure lock settings. If I enable this, if I make this immediately, and if I enable this, now, whenever I actually press the power button, the phone is locked. If I try to power it on, boom, it's going to ask for your iris scanner or it's going to ask for your fingerprint sensors, or it's going to ask for the PIN number. So definitely, it's a very important setting. Let's move on to the next tip. All right, for the next tip, let me go to Chrome real quick, and I'm at Yahoo Mail right now, and I'm about to put a password in. So watch what happens right over here. As I put my password into that password field, you can always see what the first character was. So I put an ASDD. So somebody can actually look at that, and they might be able to memorize, because they're actually seeing... Uh, the the actual character for that password showing up. So what you want to do is disable that option. Let me show you how. So remember this. So as I press D or X or Y or C, whatever, you can see every single character I'm typing in. All right. And then let's go back into the settings for a second over here. Uh, go to lock screen and security. Scroll all the way down. Go to other security settings and make sure make password visible is actually disabled. So let's disable that and see what happens now. If I go back into that Yahoo uh, browser, let me just X this out. So if I type it, you're not going to see the first character ever. All right. So make sure this uh, little security option is enabled. I don't think anybody's going to be able to memorize any of these passwords, but it's nice to be 100% safe. All right. Let's move on to the next tip. Now, this next tip is a long term security feature. And basically, it is all about uh, if you lose your phone. It's called Find My Mobile. When you enable Find My Mobile, uh, even if you lose your phone, you can track its exact location and you can also perform some remote functions on your phone uh, using a website. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Let's go to the settings and let's go to lock screen and security and then make sure you go into, it should be right here somewhere, uh, Find My Mobile, tap on it, and make sure you have a Samsung account enabled and you're signed into your Samsung account. You will need that to use this option. Now, as you can see, I have remote controls enabled. I've got Google location service enabled and I've got send last location enabled. Now, this one is really nice because just before, let's say you lost your phone and the battery died. Just before the battery dies, it sends the exact location to your email address. So you get an approximate idea of where your phone might be when the battery died. Now, these two options are good when the phone is actually turned on because you, you can send remote commands such as wiping the phone completely, make the phone vibrate or ring, and you can also use the um, uh, location service to locate exactly where your phone is. Now, how do you do that? All you do is you go to findmymobile.samsung.com on, on, on a different cell phone or a computer or a Mac or whatever or a PC and just type this uh, URL in. And then let's uh, log in. I'll show you a couple things really quick. It's going to ask you to sign in, so let me sign in. And that is the interface you're going to see. So all you do is you tap on Find, and from here you're going to get the map in the background, and you can do all these things. You can ring my device, I'll lock my device, and Samsung Pay, so nobody can ever use those, back up my device, and wipe my device and Samsung Pay, all right? You can even tap on more here, and you've got all these um, options. You can extend the battery life so you can track it even more. So let's say the battery is about to die and you cannot track it. You just extend that battery life, and you will be able to track the phone even longer. And then you get all these options. Unlock the phone, retrieve the logs of what's happening on the phone, set guardians, and all these things. So definitely, I want you guys to go enable this, Enable all these options, you know, enable the Samsung account and log in with the Samsung account and even do a little test drive.
to make sure you know what to do if your phone ever gets lost. It's a very expensive phone. You do not want to lose it. It has happened to me before and I was able to track my phone to the exact location. So that was the last thing I wanted to talk about, but just to be safe, make sure you guys do enable a pin number, a fingerprint, and an iris uh, lock type. And uh, when you do go to the fingerprint scanner, let, let me go into this option here. There's a couple things I like to do that you might want to replicate. So I just put my password in, let me log in. And uh, when you get here, on the top it says manage fingerprints, and as you can see over here, it says left index finger. Now the phone does not detect, that's the finger I'm putting on it but uh, I can simply tap on this and rename this thing. Okay, so if you are uh, scanning multiple fingers, just make sure uh, that you guys rename it so you can track them properly in case you have to come back and delete it or replace it. And then if you go back to the iris scanner, just one thing I'm gonna show you there. Now, this is not really a security feature. It's more like a fun feature. If you go to iris scanner, let me put my password in. What you could do is in the preview screen, when you open the phone for the first time to scan your eyeballs, uh, you can make sure that this uh, is actually customized. So if I, if I pick this one over here, that's one, what, what I'm going to see on the lock screen. So let me go back and just show you guys so you know what I'm talking about. So when I press and hold the home key, as you can see, that nice little picture shows up. All right, so that's the end of this video. Make sure you subscribe to Saki Tech and make sure you watch my other Samsung Galaxy S8 tips, tricks, and hidden features videos, and you're going to see the links all over the place. Do not forget to give this video a thumbs up and make sure to follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Saki Tech Online. Guys, have a fantastic day.